Hello, Telecom Elementary. This is Sam Balto, Coach Balto. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty hard for us to find a time. I'm on vacation on the East Coast with my two kiddos and family, and it's pretty busy. So I'm going to put together a little video, and then if you still have more questions, uh, please respond back. Um, this is also a rough draft. So any feedback would be greatly appreciated. I'd like to put something like this on YouTube so some people can, other people can find it. So I'm just going to go through how I created walking school buses in Boston and in Portland. And then we'll I'll sort of brainstorm what I think for your school. So, um, you know, why a safe route to school and walking school buses, more physical activity, better social, emotional, and physical health, and better and indep greater independence. For everyone, it's improved air quality, less traffic congestion, and creates a strong school community. All right, so these are some different options. There's the park and walk, so you have a designated area, maybe like a bank or a church parking lot that's close by. You, you know, ask them for permission, and then you promote that as an area that parents can park. And then you would have volunteers or a teacher support that walk. There's parades at school. So, you know, on a walking school day event, you know, kids that are there, you walk around the school. There's the walking school bus. And then bus students. I don't know if your school has bus students, but they could, you could organize for the bus students to park, you know, the bus stops a block or two away, and then they walk to get the benefits of physical activity. So what's made our uh, program very successful is our outreach, our allies, and engage uh, with the city. So outreach, uh, bring the walking school bus to, to the students and families, creating a walking map, uh, tons of promotion, making it as fun and as engaging and promoting. And something that is really important is making cold calls. So just calling up parents and informing them about what it is and what's going on. All right, so we've had uh, mascots, the Boston Red Sox mascots, city leaders. Um, I've dressed up in all sorts of characters to promote it. So just, you know, really trying to keep it fun and fresh and just uh, positive and easy for everybody to just show up. So uh, how to create a map. So what I don't know if your school has buses, but if they do, sometimes using the bus map can be really helpful to sort of see areas where there's a lot of students and you can sort of gear walking school bus routes for them. You know, children who ride the bus, definitely in Boston, it is not um, it's not faster to take the bus for some students. You know, it'd be faster for them to walk. So sort of giving them and the parents an option, and then it benefits everybody who does not qualify for the bus. Um, if it's possible, what I found to be very helpful is, as a teacher, I have access to sort of the whole school list, um, and then I just put it into Google Maps on uh, create a layer, and it sort of pops up. So I can put my cursor over any of these kids um, any of these homes and I see where they live. So if I have a walking school bus route, I can call, I can click on all the names of the houses that we're going to pass and call them and invite them. So really being intentional about, you know, creating um, and inviting these walking school bus routes. Out children are incredible uh, allies. They are very persuasive. Local police, city of Boston police were incredibly helpful and parents, getting parents involved. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see here. So then we'll sort of go through this. So here is map, all right, of where all the students live. And then I made a map of the bus stops. And then I sort of, from that, those two maps, I took the bus stops and sort of, found bus stops that were close to key, you know, parks or uh, corners, you know, like that were more populated, that are, you know, more popular spaces. And um, 
and we'd sort of create walking school bus routes. So this one right here, um, the Seaver route was the first route we did. Um, and we just sort of kept doing that route all the time. That route never stopped. So the Seaver route was our first and just like really trying to get that good and build momentum uh, was really important. And then we sort of gradually over time added routes. We tried different routes. You know, it was hard to get engagement for those routes. So we took them away. But, you know, giving it a couple good attempts um, is really important. And then similarly, you know, as you sort of make these routes, as I'd figure out where kids lived and who was participating, I could, you know, put children's names in um, and I would have access to their phone numbers and it would be like, hey, this is Coach Balto. I'm the phys ed teacher. You know, we have a walking school bus going on. We'd love for you to join. This is where you meet. There's going to be an adult and a, or a parent or a volunteer that's going to be there to walk with the kids. Um, and then similarly in Portland, Oregon, we, uh, you know, here's the student addresses. We started with Mira Flores apartment. So there's apartment complex. And then there's a school over here that's uh, like a half a mile away. So this route and this route, these two routes, uh, they end up meeting at this spot along the way. And then we have another route from um, that's over here. Um, so, you know, just trying to be consistent is, uh, really important. Um, you know, starting, you know, the first Wednesday of every month would be a huge success. Um, if you did have money to pay, you know, parent volunteers or teachers to run it, I think that is the best way to make this work, to make it really consistent. Um, you know, the city pays for, school bus drivers, you know, they should pay for walking school bus captains. Um, so if this is your school, you know, I don't necessarily know. Uh, I haven't really looked at it super closely, but like this friendship center um, or this park, you know, you could just start meeting at this park if there's a parking lot there. Um, Cause this looks like a busy crossing. If this is part of your catchment area and then, you know, you would help those students, Across this busy street and then the parents don't have to deal with all the congested area they can just sort of drop their kids off in a parking lot you know where there's a staff um and you kind of go from there also um this idea of perception where you know even if it's two blocks away that you're starting to build that momentum you're starting to build that culture in that community and also every car that doesn't have to stop right in front of the school is benefiting everybody. It benefits that parent, it benefits the student, it benefits all the children in the school, it benefits the parents who can't drop their kid off at that spot because now there's less traffic in front of the school. So uh, yeah, please let me know. Um, email back with questions. I hope this is helpful. Um, and uh, best of luck. And hopefully when the borders and everything open up, I would love to come up and visit and uh, see where things are at. All right. Thanks so much.